So we are getting pretty close to the point where we can rescue Aerith. And we're a good ways into the Shinra HQ. But we haven't found her quite yet. We've gone and we've seen the flashbacks to the Ancients. This game fleshes out the Ancients a little bit more than the original game did. And the building here is quite a bit larger than the original game as well. I'll have a few comments to say about that in a minute, but we're about to continue on here. Just finished up with the board meeting scene as well, so we're going to push on. Game's getting fairly close to the end, but we still got a few more episodes to go. And some of the more memorable scenes in the original game are still ahead of us here. Oh, look at all this stuff. This place looks nice. Freaking treasure chest just left everywhere. <laughs> Never made any sense. This is definitely the one. <sighs> Don't move. <clears throat> I ain't bluffing. What is this? A dozen bullets in your head, unless you open that door right now. You must be the ones who've been stirring up trouble lately. The eco-terrorists? Hmm. If so, I can't imagine what business you have with me. The president's upstairs. Go on, shoot. Shut up. Keep walking. <laughs> Y'all better move a muscle. Do stop pushing. Unlike you, I am less accustomed to physical violence. You'll get used to it. What is it that you want? Our friend. She's in your lab. Really? Tell us where Aerith is. Oh, so she's your friend. Well, well, well. In that case, yes, that might do the trick. Mind speaking up, son? It's nothing. Just imagining how she might react if I were to present to her your fresh corpses. <laughs> I promise <laughs> you will regret this. This boss battle seems to be happening under a little bit of a different context than we had seen in the original game. In the original version, this boss and these little sub-boss monsters were occurring as you were rescuing Aerith. She was locked in a tube with Red 13 and uh, it seemed to have been that Hojo was attempting to mate the two of them together, attempting to produce an offspring that would live long enough to have survived Hojo's experiments. I mean, the fact that Hojo wouldn't have survived those experiments either, because it would have taken, you said, something like 130 years or something like that. Aerith was young, but she wouldn't have lasted that long. I don't know exactly what the hell he had in mind in terms of experiments either. Especially since we eventually find out that the Promised Land isn't actually a physical place. And, like, what experiments was he expecting to perform on her that would have revealed the location of the Promised Land either? Like, this... None of that seems to track. But in the original version, he was trying to mate the two of them together. In this version, it seems as though he's more... Um, he proposes the idea of mating her with um, 
like soldier candidates or something like that. This monster, after um, after his attempt to mate Eric and Red Thirteen fails, for some reason this monster comes through the elevator. And I don't understand why what Hojo's plan was to load this monster into the elevator, to jam it into that tube with Aerith and Red 13. <laughs> like, why? I don't know. It served as a boss battle. And one of the... I'd say maybe it's one of the more memorable boss battles because of the scene that it took place following and it's as you're rescuing Aerith. And the fact that it has these little sub-monsters in front of it that it will just respawn. Like that, it just respawned them now. <laughs> of course, in this first, I had the same animation when they got knocked back. In this game, the they have way more production value that they can put into the respawning and everything that they do. Uh, this game is, I think, they had a bit of a problem. I I definitely mentioned this before. I'm recording this series over a very long period of time, so I kind of lose track over things I may have said before. But I think this game runs into a bit of an issue with the pacing of the story. The original version had all the events that we're seeing, more or less, taking place over a period of maybe your first time playing through it, six or so hours. If you know what you're doing, you can get through that in like two hours or so. You know exactly where to go, you can just rush through the dialogue, uh, the battles don't give you any trouble. Not that it's a particularly difficult game, but if you know what you're doing, you can get through a lot quicker. This version turns that first five or so hours into 30 hours. So the game stretches a lot of these story sequences out, not just adding in new sequences or new Places or new things like all the submissions take place in the different hub areas of the game, but it stretches a lot of the dungeons out. And I point to the um, sewer system as being in a place that was seriously stretched out, and the train graveyard is an area that was seriously stretched out because, say, the sewers were two screens. Uh, you drop down into there and you fight apps or raps or whatever it was called, and then you move into another screen and then you go up a ladder and you're out of the sewers. In this game, you go down there and you fight the boss the boss monster. And then you have an entire dungeon that takes you like 20 minutes to get through. Cutscenes, dialogue, all that kind of stuff. It takes quite a while. And then you go into the train graveyard and you have some more dialogue scenes and you go through in another couple of bosses. And overall going through that takes Probably, you know, I don't, I don't know off the top of my head. I'm going to say like an hour and a half compared to the original game where both of these sequences were really like sort of bundled together as being one dungeon. You start there, you start in the sewer, you fight a boss, and then you go through and then you fight through the um, sewers in the train graveyard and then you're up at the plate and then you fight a boss battle, which is against Reno at the plate, and that's sort of like the boss battle of this dungeon. It's stretched across three different locations, but you can think of it as all as being one dungeon. And I say it's a dungeon because you don't get the opportunity to stop at a town and let yourself calm down or anything in between it. The story doesn't uh, stop or give you a chance to breathe. Although I would say the train graveyard section does sort of, is slow enough that maybe you can calm down a bit there. But the game really stretches that out. And we're seeing the same kind of issue here inside the Shinra Tower because they got to stretch the game out and this dungeon, so to speak, takes quite a bit longer. The Shinra Tower is one of my favorite parts in the original game, so I think it's very memorable. But here they have so much extra stuff in here that it feels like you're um, going and What is happening here? <laughs> oh, they gassed it up. 
point I'm trying to make is that the game stretches, adds so much to this that it kind of breaks the traditional pacing of these kinds of games. Because what you want to have is you want to have a dungeon portion of the game where you're playing through and then you let the game sort of slow down a bit. You land into a town and then you get to spend some time in there relaxing a little bit, upgrading your weapons, gearing up, having some chance to talk to NPCs, all that kind of stuff. Then it will put you into another dungeon and you can work your way through the other side. And each of those dungeons should maybe take like a 20 minutes to a half an hour or so. And that's a pretty good balance of time uh, between, like, the more action gameplay and the sort of story-based stuff. This, though, because it stretched the original story out, has to rely a lot more on the uh, dungeon side of this. Because there aren't really any more towns. They didn't add more towns to the game. So it kind of falls out of balance a little bit, and these gameplay sections, like, even though there are a lot of cutscenes in the Shinra Tower section, like there's a cutscene before this boss battle, it doesn't have the same effect, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, let you feel like you can relax any. Hey, Hojo's getting away! such invaluable combat data. Cocky little egghead, ain't you? The results provided by my predictive models indicate that this force should be more than capable of handling you. Y'all about to learn predictable. We're taking Aerith back. Oh, take her back, you say? Correct me if I am wrong, but did the girl not hear of her own free will? Or do you mean to tell me that she is your personal property? She only came here to save Marlene! I'm afraid you misunderstand. <laughs> but I really can't be bothered to explain. This facility is home to extraordinary specimens that will change the world as we know it. Do try to be considerate. <laughs> Looks like your models got it wrong. Yes, an unknown variable, perhaps. Well, no matter. Reinforcements will soon arrive. 
But will they get here in time to save you from me? Why are you a soldier? Yeah. No, not quite. Oh, now I recall. My memory was mistaken. My boy, you weren't. Save it for later. It's getting pretty clear what these things are by this point in the story, these apparition things. They always seem to appear when this game's story is beginning to deviate from the originals. As though there's two forces at work here. One force which wants to change the original story, and one force which are the ghosts which want to keep it on course. So, for example, you saw it in the Sector 7 section of the game when Cloud wasn't going to be hired to go on the second bombing mission. Barrett didn't need him, or didn't want him there. But then the ghosts show up and Jesse gets injured, can't participate in the mission, forces Cloud to be, or forces Barrett to hire Cloud. In this case, we have, well, Hojo is about to go and say something. Or uh, earlier on, Cloud was going to go and kill uh, Reno. Ghosts appear, drag them apart. In this case, Hojo was about to reveal to Cloud that he wasn't actually in Soldier, something which isn't revealed until much, much later in the story. And the ghosts appear and drag Hojo away. So there's some sort of a force at work here trying to keep the story on track. And there's another force at work, say, Sephiroth, which is trying to change history. So that brings up a number of interesting questions. How does Sephiroth, how is he sort of aware of what happened previously? I would say Aerith, in a sense, seems to have some understanding of the original story as well. It, it's kind of funny, thinking about that. Aerith, you okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. No biggie. Let's get out of here. <clears throat> We need to go. Aerith! What the? Come on. Red 13 did appear hostile when originally encountered in the first game, in the original game. And they're sort of carrying it out here, but they are stretching it out a bit. So what the hell is it?
A fascinating question. Oh, <laughs> did it just talk? You asked what it is. Hmm. I am that which you see before you. Nothing more. I'd appreciate it if we simply left it at that. Agree? Thirteen? <sighs> Red Thirteen. The designation given to me by Hojo. Then... you must have another name. What is it? And got away. So, we're gonna go get the son of a bitch. You know, Reno, I think you might be due for some R&R. &R. Nah, I'm good. What are we going to do about Sector 7? We are going to do nothing. Been thinking. Was all that necessary? Had we refused, someone else would have completed the task. We have spared that someone the burden of a guilty conscience. Perhaps that will ease yours. <sighs> yeah, nope. Let's try another tack then. They were a sacrifice to balance the scales. Say what? After everything we'd taken from the planet, we were due to give something back. Do you actually believe that? Does it matter? <clears throat> yes, understood. The VP needs us. <clears throat> <clears throat> 